Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today is the 5th of November, 2022. Welcome to uh, the Undi Iklim campaign, uh, where we're going to try to interview all the candidates for the general election uh, number 15. And we are um, happy to have our first candidate for P116, Wang Sumaju. Uh, please welcome Mr. Ravi Sundaralingam. Hello, my name is Ravi Sundralingam. I am Gera Independence candidate for P116 Wong Samaju. Okay, welcome Ravi. Uh, we've uh, sent you um, a series of questions which you've answered. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the questions uh, and then we're gonna give you some time to review the questions. And the questions are focused on issues related to the climate and environment, as well as governance. And uh, we would like you to share your views on these questions. Yes, thank you. So we'll start with the first question. Uh, the first question is, will you push uh, uh, to table uh, and vote in favor of the urgent enactment of the Malaysian Climate Emergency Act. And your answer to it is that climate change poses a serious threat to the long-term sustainability of the planet and uncontrolled economic development has been a significant contributor to climate change. There is no nation that can escape the impact of climate change. So your answer to this is yes. Would you care to elaborate? Yes, a minister once said, that the uh, Malaysia is not a climate vulnerable country, I totally disagree. Now, this climate change can come either through natural causes, because it does follow a cyclical pattern over thousands of years, or it can be man-made. And I'll give you one example of such. The drying up of the Euphrates and the drying up of the Aral Sea has come about from the redirection of water resources that has actually now resulted in the starting of a desertification of the entire region. The moment that happens without water flowing, the natural habitat um, changes, and then the climate adjusts itself accordingly. So um, many of the things that we do, for example, from manipulating water movements or deforestation actually contributes very significantly to climate change on a regional basis. So I'm very much against uh, redirection of water. Um, there is a necessity for having dams. We need to do that, but it needs to be done with a lot of prudence. I'm also very much against uh, excessive deforestation, um, like what we see in Sarawak, where a uh, biodiverse environment has been replaced by a homogeneous environment from say, for example, um, oil palm. Okay, and the entire dynamics will also change. Yes, so I do support. Right, thank you very much Ryan, for that answer. We'll go to question number two. Question number two is, will you push uh, or table and vote in favor to institutionalize the just transition mechanism of the fossil fuel economy towards a low carbon society? by the Climate Action Week of 2023. And your answer is maybe, your elaboration is that you don't know enough of this topic. Thank you for being very honest with this answer. Would you like to add a little bit to it? But do keep in mind that we have only 10 minutes, so the answers have to be short. Yes. I never heard about the word just a transition until yesterday. And I normally like to understand the topic before I can commit to any answer because whatever answer I provide, I have to execute it. Yeah, so that is why I say maybe. Okay, thank you very much for that. We'll move to question number three. Will you push uh, and table and vote in favor of the Freedom of Information Act so that the public can access information related to environment and climate and all administrative and governance matters not directly related to national security? And your answer is maybe. Your elaboration is, I agree that information is often suppressed to cover up abuse of power and corruption. However, we do not want a situation where there is an invasion of privacy. Would you care to elaborate? Yeah. So uh, 
sometimes governments have so-called state secrets, but quite often it is meant to, with a higher agenda of covering up cases. I'm very much against it. So I agree that uh, these kind of things should be exposed to the public, but we must not also have a situation where um, people can be named and shamed even though they are innocent. That's my concern. That's fair enough. Thank you very much for that answer. We'll move to question number four. Question number four is, will you push and table and vote in favor of the citizens' freedom to criticize and question Governance Act on all matters of government, especially related to the protection of the environment, indigenous people's rights, biodiversity and wildlife rights, climate and social justice, that will allow the citizens of Malaysia the liberty from prosecution and persecution in defending their rights to rule of law, clean air and water, ecosystem and human rights protection, and all the other fundamental liberties. And your answer to that is yes. Your elaboration is governments should never be fully trusted to protect the interests of the people because political agendas could come into play that result in abuse and exploitation. Would you care to elaborate? That has always been my stand. Always. I never trust governments. Full stop. Thank you very much. Okay, moving to the next question. Question number five. Uh, will you defend and push for measures to ensure the protection of existing forest reserves in your state? and to encourage the same in other states so that forest remains intact as a whole functioning ecosystem to ensure continual protection of Malaysia's rich biodiversity, water catchment areas, and our rights to a green environment. Your answer is yes, and your elaboration is, I am against replacement of natural forest cover with homogeneous vegetation cover, such as plantations. I do not support the timber industry. A destroyed forest takes a very long time to heal itself. Please elaborate. Yes, that is a real pity. The deforestation that has taken place for the sake of some business opportunity is a permanent scar to our ecology. And this thing will come and bite us back. Uh, I, there is no need for us to look at uh, timber as uh, industry. There are other ways to um, uh, create alternative products, but it doesn't need to be the deforestation project, because once you deforest a region, how do you resurrect it? It's almost impossible. How do you know what formula you're going to apply in terms of the diversity that you need to replant? It's really difficult. Thank you for that. Uh, we'll move to question six and seven, and this is, uh, have got to be short because uh, we are at eight minutes already. So question six uh, is straightforward. Will you push changes in law or table in parliament to bring back local council elections? Your answer is yes. Your elaboration is political appointees in city councils serve to fulfill the agenda of their political masters and the exercising of political influence using local government assets within a constituency. I fully stand by that statement. Okay, hey, thank you very much for that. That is uh, something we're happy to hear. Uh, the final question uh, is interesting because you're an independent candidate uh, and it's, do you place your voters, constituents and their needs, rights and aspirations over that of your political party and your conscience and morality? Your answer is yes. Uh, your elaboration is, I no longer believe in political parties. They lack integrity and promote a warlord culture. Any elaboration? I was in a political party for almost a decade. So I know how the, what are the inner workings of a political party. It's all about the pursuit of power. It's all because of power, you get everything else, but it's usually for self gain and not for the people. So I, that's the reason I became independent. I would not flow with a political party. Okay, thank you for that. I would like to give you one minute to uh, talk about your campaign to the constituents of P116 Wong Samaju. So I hand over the floor to you. Yes. So I put a lot of thought um, 
over the years, in fact. And what I did was, uh, if you go to this particular uh, website, https colon double slash bit.ly slash ravi, R-A-V-E-E-W-M, you will get into a link tree that has my personal profile. And if you click that, you can see my bio data, but to the right of the bio link is something called key policies. So I have stated my stand on 14 key areas, which include um, education, race and religion, federal constitution, judiciary, et cetera. So that is very much great uh, in great detail. I have also created more than 160 videos, which are about a minute or less, most of them, uh, which touch on all of those points, which I put into my uh, key policies. Similarly, the TikTok videos, and I've also included three or four articles I wrote, uh, one on Vaisa Jatra, another one on whether Malaysia can actually become a developed nation. So I've done it in such a way that it tries to meet the uh, answer questions from a whole uh, group within the society, from those who, are, who want to explore and understand what I stand for. Also, there are TikTok videos for the simpler-minded people. So I just made it very clear. I want everybody to know who they're having to deal with. My name is Ravi Sundarlingam. This is what I stand for. And I want people to make an informed decision. I don't believe in voting for a logo. I always believe in voting for an individual because we get the right individual who places emphasis on righteousness, you know you cannot go wrong. Right, thank you very much uh, for your time this afternoon. Congratulations on being the first uh, candidate for G15 to uh, volunteer yourself to be on Undi Iklim. Uh, we wish you all the best in your bid for the seat for P116, Wang Maju. Have a great day and uh, happy campaigning. Thank you, Kennedy. Thank you for your time. Thank you.